This video is all about using the clutch to stay slow. You're gonna to need to do this in situations such as stop-start traffic. I'm not gonna go into hill starts in this video or how to deal with traffic in general because I want to dedicate this video to using the clutch to keep a manual car slow. I do have two videos I'm gonna to link to in the description for hill starts and for dealing with traffic in general. I recommend you watch all three videos to give you the best knowledge to drive in traffic confidently. Most new drivers struggle to keep a manual car slow. You may be one of those drivers and that may be why you're here watching this video. Let's say you're in traffic. Everyone's moving along slowly in traffic, stop start traffic, nothing too dramatic. They're accelerating gently and slowing down gently and everything is generally calm. However, you're struggling to keep the car slow. When you accelerate, the car keeps going faster and faster and faster, and then you're having to brake quite sharply when you get near the car in front. It could also be a problem when you're trying to park or reverse. You're trying to reverse into a parking space, or you're trying to park between two cars. Every time you want to move a little bit, the car moves too much, too quickly, making it impossible for you to complete your task. If you're that person, this video should definitely help you. Just before I get started, I wanna say that at the end of the video, I'm including a great offer to insure your car with Collingwood. Now let's get started with the video. What you need to understand is that when you lift the clutch to the bite point, the car will continue to accelerate. You don't have to keep lifting the clutch higher to make it accelerate. Holding it in the same place on the bite point and the car will get faster and faster. This is why the car keeps going faster and why you're struggling to keep it slow. Let me show you. Clutch down first gear, I'm gonna take the handbrake off. I'm gonna give some gas to move away, make sure it's safe to move, and I'm gonna lift the clutch to the bite point and hold the clutch still on that bite point. I won't lift it any higher. Here it goes, no one coming to the bite point. There it is, now I'm gonna keep my feet completely still. I'm not lifting the clutch up anymore, and I'm not even pressing the gas anymore. I'm just holding them still, and the car's accelerating. It's been accelerating for some time. It's still accelerating. It's 11, it's 12. I'm not holding the clutch any higher. I'm holding it still, but it's all the way up to 16 miles an hour now. I actually got to 18. So what can you do about that? So there you go. I lifted the clutch to the bite point. I didn't lift it any higher. I held it still, yet the car kept going faster. What most learners do in this situation is they decide to come off the gas pedal because they think coming off the gas pedal will stop them accelerating. And they are correct to a certain degree. If you come off the gas pedal, that will stop you accelerating as much, but you will still accelerate up to four to five miles an hour in most cars. And the fact you don't have a gas, or if the fact you're not using the gas, means you are more likely to stall as well. So four or five miles an hour may sound slow, but that can still be too quick, especially if you're trying to park, or if the traffic is only doing one or two miles an hour. This is how you keep it slow. So to stay slow, you need to lift the clutch to the bite point, and the car will start to accelerate, as you know. But then you have to push the clutch down to just below the bite point so the car no longer accelerates and then it just rolls along, it coasts. It's not bad coasting. When you're coasting at very low speeds, that's good coasting. It's what you have to do to control a manual car at very low speeds. Coasting's only a problem when you're going fast. Let me show you. So clutch down, first gear and handbrake off. I'm gonna try and keep the car below three miles an hour, say. So I wanna keep it between one and two miles an hour. I'm gonna give it some gas. I'm gonna look around, make sure it's safe to go. And I'm gonna lift the clutch to the bike point. And the car will start accelerating like it is now. I'm gonna hold it because it's starting to accelerate. When it gets to two, I'll push the clutch back in again a little bit. I actually got to three there. I went a bit quicker than I wanted to. But anyway, I'm back down to two. But I keep the gas steady. The gas stays on ready, ready for me to lift the clutch up. Now it's at one, I'll lift the clutch again, give it a little push forwards, the car little push by lifting the clutch up. There you go, it's starting to accelerate and I'll push the clutch back down again. And you see, I have to keep lifting the clutch to the bite point to give it a little push down to one again. So I'll lift the clutch up a bit. There you go, it's at two again. So now I'll push the clutch back down again. You may hear the engine get a little bit louder as I push the clutch down because the engine's not being used. As I lift the clutch, the engine gets used. So then the engine goes down. As I push the clutch down, the engine's no longer 
under load or it doesn't have any resistance to slow it down so it builds back up again. I lift the clutch up a bit, it starts rolling, I push the clutch down to just below the bite point and then it slows down again and you have to continuously do this to stay slow. So clutch up, clutch down, clutch up, clutch down. If I come up and stay up, as you know, like I am now, the car will continue to accelerate, which is handy when you want to get going, but it's not very good when you want to stay slow. Once you get to above four or five miles an hour, then you can come fully off the clutch and use the gas to control your speed. Like so, more gas to go fast, off the gas to slow down, but it will only go down to about four miles an hour by which time, four or five, depends on the car, this car is four, by which time, if I want to go slower, I'll have to press the clutch down and use the brake to slow myself down again. It's going to go left at this junction, then I can use the gas and use the clutch then to move forward. Clutch up to the bike point to accelerate, clutch down a bit to slow down. Checking it's safe, past the green telephone box, no one coming, up to the bike point again. If I want to slow down, I'll push it down a bit again, but I don't now, so I lift it to the bike point this time and hold it there and let the car accelerate. And the whole time I was doing that, I was trying to keep the gas nice and steady. So, to keep the car slow, you have to keep lifting the clutch up and down a lot. My advice is, do it slowly. Don't try and do it quickly, because you'll come up too high and make the car shoot forwards, or possibly still, or you'll go all the way down to the floor, which means you're now really far from the bite points. So the next time you wanna lift it up, you have to lift it quite a lot further, which takes longer to find the bite point. You actually want to play with the bite point. You want to lift up to the bite point of the clutch and then push it down so you're just below the bite point and then lift it up to the bite point again and just play around where the bite point area is to get the speed you need. The problem though, is when you keep lifting the clutch up and pushing it down again, most people lose their footing, especially if they keep their heel on the ground. I've mentioned this in other videos, but let me show you now. If I push the clutch down and I put my heel on the floor, if I keep my heel on the floor here and lift the clutch up, that clutch pedal is going to get lower on my foot. And as you know, you've got to push the clutch back down again. You've got to bring it up, push it down, bring it up, push it down in traffic when you're trying to stay slow. So you push it down again, put your heel on the floor and lift it and it gets lower again. And now you're starting to lose control of the pedal after you've done that a few times. And what people tend to do is to try to wiggle their foot lower like this and they can lose control of the car whilst they're trying to do that. If you don't get your foot lower, if the foot is, if the pedal is in the arch of the foot, you can't really lift it up and down very much. You see, I've actually lost my travel there. So it's very hard to get the control back. A way around this is to keep your heel up. So that way, the pedal stays in the same place on your foot, where the ball of your foot is and your big toe. Then you can lift it up and down without the pedal sliding at all. It's bad to have the pedal sliding under your foot. You never want that to happen. Once you get to the bike point, let's say the bike point's about here, then you can put your heel on the ground and then you can make small adjustments around the bike point, which is very handy and gives you good control. And because the pedal barely slides at all, it doesn't really slide much at all here, it might tiny bit, it's not sliding up and down your foot, you're not losing your footing on that pedal. When you want to push the clutch back down all the way, heel up and down, when you want to get to the bite point, keep the heel up, bring it to the bite point. When you feel the bite point, heel down, and then you can make adjustments with the clutch to keep you slow. So here we are in stop start traffic. So I'm going to use the gas and lift the clutch to the bite point to get moving. And then I'll push the clutch down and let it roll. That way it's going to be smooth. If I keep the clutch at the bite point and keep accelerating, I'll get faster and faster and faster. And then instead of rolling towards this fan in front of me, like I am now nice and slowly and smoothly, I would end up getting quite quick as I got close to it and having to brake. So a little bit of gas, a little bit of bite point, and then clutch down and I just let it roll. I don't want to get close to that car and have to brake. And most of the time the clutch is down. A little bit of gas, a little bit of bite point again, and then clutch down and let it roll. As you can see, clutch is down most of the time it is coasting, but this is good coasting. You have to coast below four or five miles an hour. Bit of gas, bit of bite point again. Just give it another push. I can actually come fully off the clutch this time because quite a bit of distance there. 
but very soon I'm pushing the clutch down and starting to brake. That's a bit of advice I can give as well here, is don't start slowing down when you get to the car in front. Start slowing down before you get there so you can slow down gently. So clutch down again, and I'm just letting it coast along nice and comfortably. What you don't want to do is do gas and bite point and hold the clutch there and get faster and faster and faster and faster. Get near the car in front, and when you get near to the car in front, brake. That's not the aim. The aim is to keep the car rolling slowly, speeding up a little bit and slowing down a little bit. This only works on the flat and uphill because of course, if you're going downhill, you're not gonna be using clutch control to keep yourself slow. You're gonna be using the brakes, but that is a different video. Well, I hope this video helps you with your slow speed car control. If you think it does, please give the video a thumbs up and check out my sponsors, Collingwood and Confused. At the moment, Collingwood have a great offer on. If you use the link, not only does it support this channel, but you get up to 35% discount and you get a 20 pound Amazon gift card thrown in there as well. And also you can insure yourself from as little as 64 pence per day. They offer many options. You can insure yourself on a friend or family member's car so that you don't affect their policy when you drive their car, which takes away a big stress when it comes to learning to drive in somebody else's car. And you can insure yourself on your own car. They have long-term policies and they have short-term policies and you can pay monthly too. If you take out a long-term policy and decide you want to cancel, they will give you a pro rata refund for the remaining term. So let's say you did three months, they refund the nine months you didn't use. I also recommend you check out confused.com because if you're doing insurance, you want to compare. Don't only go to Collingwood, check out Confused as well and compare the prices to see what's cheaper and better for you. Using the link in the description will support this channel and I find Confused often bring out really competitive quotes. If you wanna get my future videos, please subscribe and until the next one, cheerio.